Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The death toll from the coronavirus pandemic has now topped 15,000, with over 340,000 confirmed cases. Italy remains the epicenter of the pandemic in Europe, with nearly 5,500 deaths, 650 of those just on Sunday, and nearly 60,000 identified cases. Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte instructed all residents to stay at home except to procure medicine and food, and ordered non-essential businesses to shut down for the the next two weeks, as Italy scrambles to slow down the outbreak. Italy's drafted its military to enforce lockdown orders in the hard-hit Lombardy region. It's also appealed to the U.S. military to assist with medical needs. A group of over 50 Cuban doctors and nurses landed in Italy Sunday to assist with the fight against the coronavirus. Cuban doctors have regularly deployed to pandemic-stricken regions as part of a medical diplomacy program. Spain plans to extend its lockdown by two weeks, as the virus killed close to another 400 people Sunday, bringing the total number of reported deaths to more than 1,800. Greece also announced a nationwide lockdown starting today. German Chancellor Angela Merkel said she's self-quarantining after her doctor tested positive for coronavirus, as the country barred groups of more than two people from gathering, with the exception of families. This is Chancellor Merkel addressing the German public during a Sunday broadcast. The overwhelming majority of people understand that it's now down to every individual, that everybody can and must do their bit to stop the virus. That's how we show that we care for older people and the sick, for whom the virus is most dangerous. In short, that's how we save lives. In Gaza, the first two coronavirus cases were announced Saturday. Authorities have shut down restaurants and cafes and suspended Friday prayers, as residents fear an outbreak will further cripple a health system already suffering from Israel's blockade, which causes constant shortages of medicine and poor sanitation services. With a population of over 1.8 million people, the besieged Gaza Strip is also one of the most densely populated places on Earth has often been called an open-air prison. Meanwhile, shelter-in-place orders were announced in the occupied West Bank, where around 60 cases have been reported. On Sunday, Syria announced its first confirmed case of COVID-19, as humanitarian groups warn of the catastrophic effects the disease will have in the war-torn country, especially in refugee camps. In Afghanistan, a health official confirmed the country's first coronavirus-related death on Sunday. The World Health Organization has warned African nations to prepare for the worst as cases continue to multiply. The continent now has over 1,000 confirmed cases in over 42 countries. In South Africa, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases is top 270, making it the country with the highest number of infections in sub-Saharan Africa. In Burkina Faso, four government ministers tested positive for coronavirus as cases there are top 60, the highest number in West Africa. Lockdowns are underway in multiple countries, including Rwanda, Ghana and Tunisia, which now has 75 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Meanwhile, travelers who arrive in Ethiopia will face mandatory quarantine. As of today, Somalia is lifting its ban on international flights for two days so that citizens outside the country can come home. In Nigeria, health authorities are warning against self-medicating after at least two patients overdosed on the anti-malaria drug chloroquine, which President Trump has praised as a treatment for coronavirus. Tests are currently being carried out with anti-malarials in the U.S. and other countries, but the FDA and the World Health Organization have not approved its use as a treatment for COVID-19. Back in the U.S., lupus patients have reported shortages of the drug hydroxychloroquine, which is used to treat both malaria and lupus, following Trump's recent statements. 
In Latin America, Chile has confirmed at least 630 cases of COVID-19. Brazil's closed its borders to eight neighboring countries for the next 15 days, as cases there top 1,600. 25 deaths have been reported in Brazil. In Ecuador, where all flights are currently banned, the mayor of Guayaquil ordered vehicles to block the runway of the city's international airport to prevent an airplane from the Spanish carrier Iberia from landing. The plane later landed in Quito. Ecuador has reported nearly 800 cases and 14 deaths. The country's health minister has resigned, citing lack of resources and government mismanagement. In Colombia, at least 23 people were killed, dozens injured, as a riot rocked a Bogota prison, where prisoners have been protesting dire sanitary conditions and demanding protection from the coronavirus. Colombia is set to go on lockdown starting Tuesday for a period of three weeks. Meanwhile, Bolivia announced it's postponing presidential elections in May, as it heads into a two-week nationwide quarantine. In Central America, Guatemala and El Salvador have both enacted strict curfews. The International Olympic Committee said Sunday it's still weighing options for the summer's Tokyo Olympics, including postponement. The Japanese government also appears to be open to postponement, following earlier rejections of the idea. Canada and Australia said they will not be sending their athletes to Japan this summer and urged for a one-year postponement in India. Authorities have placed lockdown orders on 75 districts, which include the heavily populated cities of New Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, after a nationwide 14-hour test curfew took place on Sunday. India currently has just over 400 confirmed cases of COVID-19, but Health officials say the disease could spread extremely fast through the country, which has the world's second-highest population at 1.3 billion. Here in the United States, cases have now topped 35,000 and over 450 deaths. The U.S. now has the third most confirmed cases worldwide. But a widespread lack of testing nationwide means the actual number of cases is highly um, is likely significantly higher by thousands. Around one out of every three Americans or U.S. residents are now under stay-at-home orders as Ohio, Louisiana, Delaware and the city of Philadelphia became the latest places to announce lockdown measures, joining the states of New York, New Jersey, Illinois, California and Connecticut. New York has half the coronavirus cases in the United States, with nearly 17,000 known infections and 150 fatalities. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo urged the federal government to take over the production and acquisition of much-needed medical supplies, as states have had to compete with one another for the fast-dwindling resources. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio warned the city is just 10 days away from massive shortages of critical supplies as he blasted Trump for his response to the pandemic. Right now, I have asked repeatedly for the military to be mobilized, for the Defense Production Act to be used to its fullest, to get us things like ventilators so people who can live who would die otherwise. Chuck, I can't be blunt enough. If the president doesn't act, people will die who could have lived otherwise. In more news from New York, the New York Presbyterian Hospital System announced Sunday it will no longer allow any visitors for patients giving birth, including partners. The World Health Organization has said all pregnant people, including those with confirmed or suspected COVID-19 infections, should have the right to have a chosen companion present during labor. And elsewhere in New York, disgraced Hollywood mogul and convicted rapist Harvey Weinstein has tested positive for COVID-19, according to local reports. He's currently being held at the Wendy Correctional Facility in western New York, but was previously at Rikers Island, as well as a patient at Bellevue Hospital in Manhattan. At least 38 people at Rikers, including prisoners and staff, have tested positive for the coronavirus as fears mount over the disease ravaging prison 
prison populations. At least 23 people have been released from Rikers so far. Hundreds of prisoners around the country have been released in recent days as part of an effort to curb prison populations amidst the coronavirus crisis. The first confirmed case at a federal prison was reported at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, New York. Trump said at his Sunday news briefing the White House is considering releasing elderly and nonviolent federal prisoners. In Washington state, an outbreak at another nursing center is being reported, with at least one dead and dozens more infected. Washington was one of the early epicenters of the pandemic in the United States at the Life Care Center of Kirkland, where the disease killed 35 people. In Ohio, reproductive rights defenders are calling out attempts by Attorney General Dave Yost to close abortion clinics amidst the coronavirus crisis by labeling abortions non essential procedures. State Senator Nikki Antonio said, quote, every woman who seeks an abortion knows it's an essential time-sensitive time procedure, especially in states like Ohio, which has drastically limited the window when abortions are allowed. It's inexcusable that our state's attorney would play politics with a global pandemic, she said. In Florida, the University of Tampa and several other Florida colleges said a number of its students who celebrated spring break have tested positive for coronavirus, days after images of densely packed revelers on the state's beaches went viral and caused outrage. A Florida attorney is suing Governor Ron DeSantis to compel him to close all Florida's beaches to deal with the pandemic. Hunger strikes are now underway in three immigration and customs enforcement or ICE detention centers in New Jersey, as prisoners call out deteriorating conditions and a failure to protect them from a potential COVID outbreak. In media news, tributes poured in to NBC News hosts and other employees after longtime NBC audio technician Larry Edgeworth died of medical complications related to COVID-19. Dozens of Mike Bloomberg campaign staffers have been told they were exposed to coronavirus just hours before they were laid off and days before they were set to lose their health insurance. In other 2020 election news, Bernie Sanders' campaign raised over $2 million for coronavirus charities in two days after making an appeal to supporters. Indigenous communities say they've been neglected in the federal response to coronavirus as emergency funds and medical uh, aid for tribal groups have been delayed. On Friday, the Trump administration said it's limiting non-essential travel on the U.S.-Mexico border. Despite the travel restrictions, construction of Trump's border wall is continuing, putting construction crews at risk of infection and costing taxpayers billions of dollars, as experts say the economy is already in a recession. And nationwide, the deadline to file taxes has been extended three months to July 15th. The deadline for the census has been extended by two weeks. At a press conference Sunday, President Trump said the National Guard will be activated in California, New York and Washington state, where states of emergency have been called. Trump referred to himself once again as a wartime president during the news conference. When asked if he would exempt his own companies from bailout, Trump refused to do so. Trump also rejected calls from governors and hospitals to use the Defense Production Act to ramp up production of critical medical supplies, despite earlier statements he would put it, quote, into higher gear. Trump also shot down proposals to nationalize industries to better manage production of such necessary supplies. We're a country not based on nationalizing our business. Uh, uh, call a person over in Venezuela, ask them, how did nationalization of their businesses work out? Not too well. Uh, the concept of nationalizing our business is not a good concept. At another press briefing Friday, Trump lashed out at NBC reporter Peter Alexander after he asked what Trump's message is to address the fear of the American people. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. I think it's a very nasty question, and I think it's a very bad signal that you're putting out to the American people. 
Meanwhile, lawmakers continue to debate a massive stimulus package today, after Democratic senators blocked a $2 trillion bill Sunday they say failed to protect workers. This is Massachusetts Senator, former presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren speaking Sunday. They're trying to advance a proposal that would be great for giant corporations and leave everyone else behind. We're not here to create a slush fund for uh, Donald Trump uh, and his family or a slush fund for the Treasury Department to be able to hand out to their friends. We're here to help workers. We're here to help hospitals. And uh, right now, what the Republicans have proposed does neither of those. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul has become the first senator to test positive for coronavirus. His office says he does not have any symptoms. Several Republican senators say Rand Paul was in the Senate gym and pool on Sunday, just hours before he got the diagnosis. Senator Paul is a medical doctor. Utah Senators Mike Lee and Mitt Romney both announced they'd be self-quarantining following the news. As criticism of Trump's response to the coronavirus crisis mounts, Reuters is reporting Trump eliminated a position last year at the Centers for Disease Control, which was tasked with helping to detect, investigate and help contain disease outbreaks in China. This comes as reports emerge Friday that Trump continued to play down the threat of coronavirus, despite repeated warnings by U.S. intelligence in January and February that a global pandemic was likely. Meanwhile, Politico is reporting the Justice Department has quietly been pushing lawmakers to grant the department new powers amidst the public health crisis, including the ability to have some judges detain people indefinitely without trial, pause court proceedings during emergencies and ban people with COVID-19 from seeking asylum. The measures are not likely to pass a Democrat-run House. In an interview with Science magazine, Anthony Fauci, head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, addressed Trump's many erroneous statements about the pandemic, saying, quote, I can't jump in front of the microphone and push him down. Fauci added, OK, he said it. Let's try and get it corrected for the next time. And Secretary of State Mike Pompeo arrived in the Afghan capital of Kabul today amidst the mounting coronavirus crisis as he attempts to move forward the historic U.S.-Taliban peace deal, which has been strained by ongoing violence and political turmoil. Pompeo is meeting President Ashraf Ghani and his rival Abdullah Abdullah, uh, Abdullah, Abdullah who both claimed victory in September's elections. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.